Здравейте, приятели! Аз съм Луис, а вие гледате The Global Playlist. Today we visit Bulgaria, one of the oldest countries in Europe with a really long history where we can learn about the mighty Thracians and the origins of the Cyrillic or Bulgarian alphabet among many other things. By the way, it would be amazing to reach 100 subs, so if you want to join the quest to complete the first Global Playlist, please subscribe. Now let's talk about music. Due to its super long history and strategic location, Bulgaria has been a cultural melting pot that has developed a truly interesting musical and dancing tradition. It is led by its well-known female choirs and female folk singers. In fact, a Bulgarian folk song was included on the golden record that was sent into space in 1977. It is also known for its use of traditional local instruments, complex rhythms and asymmetrical meters. And of course, this rich folk tradition has since evolved and received influences from abroad even during the socialist era. So nowadays, we can enjoy younger and older Bulgarian bands and artists from all genres like rock and hip hop, along with more local genres that we will discover throughout this enriching episode. And don't forget, you can listen to all the songs from this episode on the project's official Spotify profile. Let's go! Here we have our amazing guest, Svilen from Sofia, Bulgaria. Welcome, Svilen. Thanks, thanks so much for having me, Luis, on the show. Really happy to be here and talk about music, which I always love doing. Cool, so let's go for it. Could you tell us something about you? So I've always been into music, so from about 11 or 12 years old, I started playing guitar and was playing in different bands in, in school, you know, starting with classical, then a lot of rock, and, and then was getting into jazz as well. And that kind of continued then into university. Basically, I always really love speaking about music and being around music people, which is so really great to be here again. Second thing is my life, because I'm, I'm coming from a diplomatic family. My dad's a diplomat. so. They've taken me around the whole world. But despite this, the whole time I've really been close to the Bulgarian culture. In my family, we've always spoken Bulgarian and I also lived half of my life in Bulgaria and we visit there four or five times a year. So at the core, I feel Bulgarian. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell us something about uh, Bulgaria? So maybe to put it into context, I have to like give a bit of Bulgarian history. Bulgaria as a state was originated in the 7th century mm -hmm. and it actually came from the mix of three different cultures which was the proto-Bulgarians who came from Asia on horses kind of like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones the Slavs which were they were living in you know on the Balkan Peninsula and also the Asian Thracians so this and then the later Turkic influence when the Ottoman Empire spread around Europe really created a very diverse mix both ethnically and then culturally So I would say the national folklore music originated in the 19th century. Actually, Bulgaria could be separated in seven different folkloric traditions. Basically, each of these had their own songs that were passed down generation to generation. So nothing was written down. Mm -hmm. It was all verbally, you know, kind of like storytelling. And then in the 20th century, the, let's say there was a specific effort to kind of record this and make them into you know folkloric standards and that's i guess what gave rise to the more contemporary folkloric music cool what are your first memories with music my first memories growing up in the 90s so i was living in austria at the time and we were living in this building where there was a lot of other bulgarians actually and i was one of the the smallest kids so i was hanging out with these older girls, you know? So what were girls listening at the time in the 90s? It was mainly Backstreet Boys and the Spice Girls. So probably my first memories are like me dancing around to the Spice Girls. Also the, the video for Thriller, mm -hmm. it was something that was just very impactful for me visually as well. So those are probably my first. Going back to Bulgaria, uh, what are the most popular traditional genres that everybody yeah. should know? One that I would emphasize is Valia Balkanska. She's about 80 years old now and she's a very, very alive and very vibrant person, very fun to be around. And she performed this song called Islewe Delu Haidutin. It's just like a solo song where it's just her voice and a bagpipe. And it's like very like moving and kind of intense to be honest, the song. And it was actually sent into space. Okay. They did a disc with like a selection of music from Earth 
and it's on there. So it's been immortalized, I guess, for the aliens. I've read also that uh, women choirs are quite popular in the Bulgarian music tradition, right? Yeah, men might be dancing, mm -hmm. but the singing is almost always done by by women. I would mention this other artist called uh, Bulgarka. So it's it's a trio. It's three women with three different types of voices. And if you listen to their songs, they just go into this uh, very interesting tonal spaces. Would you like to highlight any other genres before maybe going uh, to what is happening today? Sure. So maybe moving chronologically. So Bulgaria between the 50s and uh, 89, 1989, was in a socialist regime. So that obviously impacted the country in many like socio-political ways, but also the music. Even though we were in a socialist regime, I think people were really Western influenced, so they were looking at to the West for their influences. I would mention Sturzite, which was uh, like Bulgaria's version of the Beatles, and actually Sturzite means the crickets. So Sturzite are to Bulgaria what the Beatles are, you know, to the US and the UK. So this was somehow the band that started rock maybe or, or oh yeah i would say so pop, okay. pop rock even so in the 90s and again that was like a big moment you know when the iron curtain fell new genres got popping up you know uh, alternative rock and also hip-hop and on the alternative rock scene there were bands that were maybe following a more straight hard rock route like here i would mention betere a really really good band a nice ballad that they have is el mas Quo, quo and Maybe on the more alternative side, I would mention uh, this band called Pif and also this other one called Ostava. And Ostava for me are really the best band, you know, they really set the foundations of alternative rock and they sing in Bulgarian because a big trend now with the more contemporary bands, Bulgarian bands, is many of them are singing in English, mm -hmm. which makes sense commercially, but just finding this poetic element of Bulgarian was very, very interesting because mm -hmm. it's very difficult, I think, to to That's find right. this language. That's yeah. right. Guys, remember, you can find all the music and the songs that this villain is mentioning in the playlist of this episode on Spotify. There is a pretty popular genre in Bulgaria and with Bulgarian origins called uh, Chalga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I knew we have to speak about Chalga. <laughs> so Chalga, essentially, it kind of originated as well in the early 90s. And uh, actually part of its origins are in folklore music. So many of the singers are actually very, very good, technically very trained singers mm -hmm. who were originally doing like folkloric singing, uh, but then they had to pay the bills and Chauga sells. So <laughs> they, they went into, into Chauga. Uh, and then the other big origin tree is, I think, what more Oriental, I would say, like Turkic music and these kind of Turkic beats, which I think you would really identify in Chauga. So what's the notorious thing about Chauga is more on the image side. So it's kind of really, uh, I guess you could compare it to the whole like reggaeton scene in a way. Like it's really about the music videos, skimpy clothing, I would say, and like really focused on falling in love and sex and, <laughs> and, and, and that, and yeah, fun stuff like that, so. Okay, could you mention some Chalga artists so we can yeah. uh, listen to them? Yeah, so if I speak about Chalga, I have to speak about Aziz. Okay. Which is a huge, huge icon in Chalga. He's actually of Roma origin, so he's a minority in Bulgaria. And he kind of came about at a time in the early 2000s where I think Bulgarian society was quite conservative in terms of like gender role and sex. And here is a guy, he had a really, really kind of uh, transgender like look and feel, you know, and he, he was cross-dressing and just bringing that, you know, to the podium was really creative and I think brave. So, uh, you know, since then he's done a lot of different styles and he's kind of a big, big celebrity. Uh, but I think it's impressive what he's done, to be honest. So I would start my Chauga journey there, you know, just to see some of the classics. Okay, and maybe some female divas. Okay, so this is one that she's not Chauga, actually. She's coming before Chauga. She is kind of like the, the Madonna of Bulgaria. Okay. So she's older. She's, I think, eight years old now. But during the socialist times, I think she was... Uh, let's say the most influential, the most iconic 
singer. So she's also, she's kind of pop folk. So okay. mixing the two genres. And here I would speak about this song that maybe her most famous one called Vetrove, mm -hmm. which means winds. Okay. So what's sounding now in Bulgaria? What are the genres of an artist? Right now, actually, I think it's a very exciting time for music in, in Bulgaria because a lot of new things, a lot of more creative and diverse things are coming about. So both on the rock side, but also some really interesting hip hop acts. Which, which I might highlight. In the West, you know, you really have like the indie rock, which is like a big tendency now, mm -hmm. and that's fine. But it's interesting to find some more experimental stuff. So uh, a few bands that I would highlight, first on the rock side is Ali from the future. He's not Bulgarian in origin, but he moved to Bulgaria when he was very young. Well, they sing in English. It's just a style of alternative rock that is a bit, it's quite different from like the contemporary indie but it still sounds like very, very up to date. Another artist that I would highlight is uh, Crack House. So mm -hmm. that's again like uh, this alternative rock band that are again mixing a lot of different elements, new and old. And okay. I think they do it in a very creative way. And from the hip hop side, I found this act called So Called Crew. If you listen to it, you're gonna feel that Tribe Called Quest influences. You're gonna feel some Mujabi's influences. So that's another act I would definitely recommend okay. from the kind of underground Bulgarian scene. Perfect. So now it's time to discover the song that as Villain has chosen to represent Bulgaria in the global playlist. Don't forget to recommend the song in your mother tongue. The song that I've chosen is Prikaska by the band called Pif. And now switch to Bulgarian. Is <laughs> Braktazi Pesen. Uh, по няколко причини. Мисля, че първо от една гледна точка е, е една вековна песен, смисъл, която и да слушаш сега, и да слушаш след 10 години, винаги ще звучи актуално и релевантно. Това е песен, която според мен е м от една гледна точка на текста, те са само два куплета, много е семпла, но също време е изключително силна и той е просто Uh, мисля, че е страхотен екземпляр на, на българския поет. И е песен, която за мен е пее за, за прехода, нали? прехода на един народ, на една държава, но и прехода на една личност. Мисля, че нали, темите, които третира песента, всички сме се чувствали и сме се идентифицирали по такъв начин в някакъв момент. Тъй, че нищо. Надявам се, <laughs> надявам се, че ще ви хареса. Thanks a lot, Svilen. First album you purchased? A bootleg copy of <laughs> Linkin Park's Meteora when I, I think I was 11 or something. Favorite album of all time? Surfer Rosa by the Pixies. Top three artists. Right now I'm actually in a space like listening to a lot of jazz fusion stuff. One is Haitis Coyote, uh, this Australian like jazz fusion band. Another that I recommend uh, is Nowhere. And these guys are from California. And again, it's uh, like jazz and electronic and just really, really fun video game music even. And the third one that really stands out as well is Buke and Gaze, which is a duo from Brooklyn and they make their own instruments. And it's kind of experimental rock. Favorite song? I would say Paranoid Android by Radiohead. Best concert ever? I think for me, it was when Perota Chingo, which is this Argentinian like folk folk band, they came to Madrid and they played at uh, El Círculo de las Bellas Artes, okay. which had incredible acoustics and it was just a really intimate, mm -hmm. fun experience. Favorite venue, anywhere? I think in Madrid, I would say I like a lot Sala Caracol. It's nothing special or amazing, but just the artists I've seen there and the concerts I've seen have been like special for me. Totally agree, actually. It's not fancy, but it's, no. it's all you need. Exactly. Perfect. Artist you would love to see performing live, even if it's not possible anymore? Yeah, so this is an answer I think you already <laughs> got on one of the other interviews that you had. But for sure, it would have been like seeing, just living the whole grunge thing in the 90s and seeing Nirvana uh, or the Pixies as well at that time. It mm -hmm. would have been amazing. Cool. Yeah. It, it's true. I think it's uh, Mia from Denmark that mentioned yeah. Nirvana. Cool. 
is kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> top festival ever. Yeah, you know, I've been to some festivals and I never had like this amazing experience. But I think I would like to go to Burning Man one day. And now it's time for the guilty pleasure. In the last few weeks, like we've been going to a lot of, uh, we've been to two or three weddings with my girlfriend at weddings and such in, in Spain. You do, a lot, you do get a lot of like reggaeton and, and trap and this type of music. I'm usually not like a huge fan, but there is one specific song <laughs> that's kind of gotten stuck, which is Pepas by Farruko, which if you analyze it, it's actually such a minimalistic production of the song and it's, I think it's really well done. I think it's a really well done song actually. Now we're going to the secret question. Uh oh. In Bulgaria, you not uh, the opposite way as in <laughs> many other, as in most of the countries, right? Yeah. I guess you're more used to the traditional way. Yeah. Do you think you could answer in the Bulgarian way? Sure. Is your name Svilen? <laughs> Is Luboslav Mladenov Penev your uncle? Do you like uh, Banitsa? <laughs> Was Christus Stoichkov a good football player? I agree with that. Do you know a band called Last Hope? Is Preslava your favorite artist? <laughs> Is this game totally silly and ridiculous? <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Svilen. Thanks for sharing all this knowledge with all of us. Remember, you can listen to all the music on Spotify. And remember, you can listen to the podcast too, where you will discover the story about the song that Svilen has chosen to represent Bulgaria. So that's all. Thanks a lot, Svilen. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot, Luis, for having me. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So good to hear that. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Svilen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>